next reader is a uh, visual arts teacher here in town in Portland. He's also our videographer for the evening tonight. Um, he's currently immersed in his first novel, Bella Vista, and his work has appeared in a couple different places, Art Portland, Story, Intellectual Refuge, and Linden Avenue. And what's said about him, and now you have to know that this is definitely a compliment, is that his tongue is so burnt that his all right, sorry. The language is so burnt. His tongue is ashes. I just say the guy has a way of fucking language. It blows me away. Please welcome Adam Strong. See if I can get through the reading with all the ashes. Uh, on the <laughs> Thanks, Tommy. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks, everybody here. Um, I'm going to read for the first time from my novel called Bella Vista, like Tommy said. And um, just a, not too much setup, but uh, father and son have driven 13 hours from Park Slope in Brooklyn down to Miami. Um, the mother is an artist, and she's kind of lost her way to drugs. And the narrator calls her the Gray Lady. So she's called the Great Lady because she's been lost to drugs. So here we are. Bella Vista, New House, Miami. Me and Dad just drove 13 hours down here. I'm walking around the upstairs. I feel like I'm floating through these rooms. Next to mine is the fresh vacuum carpet of what used to be an office. It smells of old wood and synthetic nothing of the carpet cleaner. Next to the office is a bedroom where my sibling would go if I had a sibling. The empty room has a ceiling fan, and there are clean vacuum lines on the carpet. The view is the same from my room, angles of sailboats, a canal going all the way to Biscayne Bay. On the way back to my room, I walk by the tall window going from top to bottom in front of the carpeted stairwell. There's a view of the patio, the pool, and the hot tub just beyond it. The patio is a whitewashed coral finish. A wall around the front of the house protects us from the mangroves across the street. My feet on the carpeted stairwell, the window with the bubbling pool and patio furniture, a thermometer bobbing around, going underwater, rising back up again. I want to be that thermometer. I want to live half submerged. Downstairs, all that stands between me and the pool is the click in front of my door, and my feet warm on the coral of the patio. I take off my shirt and leave it on the chair. I'm down in my underwear when I dive in. The cool from the pool pushes the hot part of my brain into a small compartment inside my head. I do the thing I do when I want to go deep. I keep my mouth closed and I blow air out of my nose. I do this until I lay my back down on the scratchy bottom of the pool. The view from down here, the bends and bubbles of light dancing on the surface, is the world changing around me. Down here, with the weightless feeling of my organs neatly contained in my body, I see something that looks like a window on the side of the deep end of the pool. My breath is almost running out. I push up and there's a burn in my lungs before I reach the surface. I open my mouth, I breathe in every molecule. Heading back down, my arms push the water around me closer to the deep end. My eyes sting a bit from the chlorine, I swim closer. There's a window cut in the side of a pool about halfway up the wall, something to be seen on the other side of that window. The shrinking space of air in my chest, open space and shadows. Oh my god damn, there's a room underneath the pool. The house is still so new to me, I don't know where I'm going, but I have to get there. I drip water through the kitchen and down the stairwell. I wander through a few rooms. I see what could be my inn, a wall with a long cut down the front, a closet latched by a wooden handle. Mom, if you could have seen me put my weight behind that little door, if only you could have been there instead of with the gray lady. The cracks of blue light opening bigger, me in a bath of blue light in the middle of all that dark. The window stretches out in front of me, a thick head of chlorine smell, humidity. Me in the window and all that blue light that never stops moving. Caribbean ocean perfect. Like if you took every aquarium you ever saw and added heavy doses of vacation brochure, even a whale nature program or two, you still wouldn't come close. There's something holy in there. Perfect fucking postcard to me. Next to the window is the pool pump with its handles and tubes. Mom, if you could have seen me with sore bits of gravel down on my knees, bathed in that perfect fucking postcard blue. Your eyes were like that blue, seeing me as only you did, filling in all the dark places, plenty of light for you to paint me in. There's so much blue in this little space that the room can't hold it all in. The light from that window warm, bubbles and yellows from the sun up there mixing perfect, perfect fucking postcard blue. 
Down here, time stops. Down here, I'm alive in a place just for me, a secret, a sanctuary. It's like the room was pulled from X-Men number 178, the Phoenix Saga. For all I know, this room was created by Professor X, a window to watch the world through. There's a deep hum sound I can feel in my chest, a hum that's probably the pool pump turning on. There are clear PVC tubes just above my head and they start to shake. A hissing sound and the clear tubes get filled with water. Yellow streaks and perfect fucking postcard blue. Sunshine and ocean. As loud as the pool pom pom is, there's something soothing about it, a breath, a sound that fills up my ears and my throat. The pool pom pom becomes a wave in my mind, demanding the inside out, the same rhythm as the tides, a breath I can breathe with. With the blue in front of me, the pool pump breathing for me, and tubes of liquid sunshine beamed above me, my breath is pumped through with chlorine and light. Through this window, I see how my life can change, that it's all I'm wanting to. An hour ago, my face looked like it was dipped in ash, but here I am breathing in sunshine and ocean, and every second is full of the kind of being a kid wonder I thought I lost when I moved down to Miami. Down here, I can see whatever scares me, as it should look. The tragedy of my life, mom lost a gray lady, how all this can just go away, it's all on the angle. This room, my chapel, my secret, when the shit gets too much, I can just come down here with sunshine and perfect fucking postcard blue, with a pool pump breathing for me. I can live on Bella Vista with a hardly there dad. I can live half submerged. I lie down on the gravel. I stretch out in all that warm with a pool pump breathing for me. I close my eyes and feel the back of my eyelids sweat. I get this movie playing in another room feeling. I hold on as long as I can, but there's something in the heat and the bright, and even though I'm right here on the gravel, I fall asleep. The hum of the pool pump kicks on again. Open my eyes and I see the reflections bending in the window. They're walking around up there, stretched out in shadows of Dad and his ballooning abdomen, his spidery legs walk with someone close behind. The smooth edge of water meld into the shape of a black cocktail dress. I brush off a few bits of gravel. I tear out of there. I make sure to put the wooden latch back exactly where I found it. The pool pump hum gives me one last assisted breath on my way out. I close the door on the last streets of perfect fucking perspective. Wow. Our next reader is